Did you know that there's a smartphone connected dog in the FNAF universe now? A smartphone dog. A smart phone dog. Oh, what do you want from me? Get out of my closet! No! Why? I was told not to leave until you play the bad games. Welcome to another episode of that Cyber Channel. I'm Dan is stuck in a whirlwind of FNAF fan games and is slowly dying. Well, cue the oh crap here we go memes because we're here again. Y'all let me do Doom, so I guess you get this. Before I get started though, I wanted to address something. I've been getting a lot of questions about editing, and as much as I'd love to answer everyone, I'm usually slammed 24-7 and can't respond, let alone sleep. So today I have a solution that can help you and myself with today's sponsor, Skillshare. Click the link below to get two months free with Skillshare or forever be haunted by Closet Freddy. Whew. Now that I have your attention, Skillshare is awesome and has been a huge help with helping me improve my own skills here on the channel. Becoming an editor or pursuing a career as a cinematographer doesn't have to wait for expensive film school. Skillshare has tons of classes from teachers from all walks of life. Working novelists, editors, and web designers are here to help you learn their craft. Even this old editor can stand to learn a few extra tricks. Every time I talk to a new editor, I end up learning a new shortcut that I should have known a long time ago. Q and W and Premiere save yourself some time. And that's why I'm checking out Oliver Astrologos, totally butchered that name, class on editing travel stories for when I finally get to leave the editing cave for some fun. Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 cybernauts who click the link below two months free of premium Skillshare to get started on learning some new skills. After that, it's only $10 a month with an annual subscription. Education is incredibly important, and you can start learning something that you actually care about right now. Check it out below because I'm about to learn more about the FNAF Extended Universe than I want to, making me want to put a hole through a stupid animatronic in my closet. I'm hungry, I need pizza. Then get delivery. Well, here we are once again, diving back into the FNAF fan game world for the sister location of this video series. So the basics. Tons of FNAF fan games, I look like Jack Black, found out the game salmon also gets those comments, so apparently FNAF fan games is how Jack Black clones are created. I don't know, it seems like the logical conclusion to jump to. As always, I called for suggestions in the community tab and made poor producer Evan go through all of them. I've seen things. Great, thanks for coming by, buddy. Why are there so many of them? This time, I got a ton of suggestions for sequels or full franchises, which I try to avoid, but I have a deal for you guys. FNAF Fan Game 6 is gonna happen. I think we all know that. So here's the deal. If you guys can help me get to 100,000 subscribers by October, I'll cover an entire FNAF Fan Game franchise in addition to also making FNAF Fan Game 6. That's an extra FNAF Fan Game video to put into your eye holes. Spread the word, watch the new videos, and we'll cover something like all of Five Nights at Candy's, all of Five Nights at Wario's, or even all of the Jolly series. Maybe Day Shift, we'll see. You help me, I subject myself to twice the fan games for you. God, why am I doing this? In the meantime, let's jump in by breaking one of the longest running rules I've had on this series. Like I said, we usually don't do sequels here unless the first game doesn't work or there's only the second game because the first game was taking down Final Nights. That is, until basically every comment mentioned Jolly Phase 2, and there's nothing like commenter pressure to break everything I've built so far. I'm opening up the floodgates, are they? Well, anyway, welcome to Jolly Bee's Phase 2, easily one of the most suggested games this time around. And I can see why. Ivan G, you just blow my freaking mind every time, my guy. Jollibee's Phase 2 follows the aftermath of Jollibee's as the animatronics from the restaurant are shipped off to storage. As an employee at the warehouse, it's your job to get the packages to where you need them to be, all while guarding against Popo, Yum, and to die too many times to see the others. At this point, showing me sucking is just part of the scripting format because it, it's guaranteed. However, what makes this game so great is the massive amounts of depth to this game. You now have four monitoring or 
defenses rather, at your disposal to help keep the animatronics at bay. While you'll mostly stay in motion detect, there are a couple extra things like audio and hacking to move animatronics where you want them. Each of these will break if used too much, so you'll have to reboot them much like you did in FNAF 3. After each shift, you'll actually get paid, which you can then spend on upgrades for your workstation. As a mechanic, it's a great way to improve your defenses, but in reality, kind of messed up that you have to spend money to help your company rather than paying your rent. But I mean, like, you make a grand a night, so can't complain, I'd take this job. If you have trouble on a night, upgrading can make a big difference. Plus, if you're short a couple bucks, or $100 more likely, you can do four different side jobs to earn the cash. These all play roughly the same, with you performing some task in the warehouse while having to check your back to stop animatronics from attacking you. They're fairly easy, except the drone one. Where were you even? Overall, Jollibee's Phase 2 is just incredibly well made. The mechanics are incredibly tight, and especially with the most recent update, and the atmosphere is absolutely terrifying. More so, however, I feel like it's the most freeing FNAF fan game I've played. There are tons of ways to keep evil at bay and earn money to help stack the odds in your favor. I definitely see why this was the most suggested. Let's hop into the next most suggested game from you guys, Circus Baby's Diner. Last time we dealt with Baby as the titular character, I wasn't too thrilled about running between tents. The gameplay is a resounding meh. This time around, I gotta say, this might be one of my favorite ones in the bunch. Even if Funtime Foxy is a colossal piece of- uh -uh. Fair. Good call, Funtime Foxy. You still suck. Circus Baby's Diner puts you in the shoes of a security guard at Circus Baby's Diner, if you couldn't tell. Gameplay similar to FNAF 1, two doors each with locking mechanisms, and this time with the addition of a vent. Something is going to kill me through this thing. We actually streamed this on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash that cyber channel, and it wasn't long into the stream when I died horribly. It's not until I actually get um, jump scared like once or twice when I go, oh, okay, right. It's not that big of a deal. Mm -mm. Someone clipped that, right? Yeah, this game gets really aggressive much faster than I was expecting. While my focus was on Funtime Freddy, Funtime Foxy had a free go at eating my face off. One thing I gotta say about this game is that the difficulty spikes pretty significantly each night. You'll need to quickly figure out how to juggle defenses and keeping your generator going for power. It's a tricky balance, but defending is fairly easy. See animatronic enter, laugh and close the door. Oh, hi, hi? bye? <laughs> it's just something about how they slide in like, oh, hey, what's up? Care if I hop in your closet? Wait, what? Oh, come on! At the end of each night, you'll be asked to fill out a survey about what happened, so make sure you pay attention to what's going on. This game is fantastic. If you can rise to the challenge of the difficulty spikes, this is the game for you. Next up is Fred Bear and Friends Left to Rot, and man did this game have me on edge from the very beginning. While the opening is uneventful, there was something that was just chilling about the experience. I kept expecting things to turn into the salvage minigames from FNAF 6, but I'm getting jump scared ahead of myself. Left to Rot follows a mourning parent as they break into Fazbear's family diner to find evidence on Afton's part in their child's existence removal. Each night, you'll be breaking further and further into the restaurant. The atmosphere of this game is absolutely terrifying. While Jolly Bee's Phase 2 and Circus Baby's Diner are spooky, Left to Rot creates a much darker atmosphere. But then we get to the tasks, and my biggest pet peeve about FNAF fan games popped out Punched me until I was puking in rage. Left to Rot has a bad case of the reads. You know, the games where you need to read the descriptions of each animatronic to figure out how to defend against them. And even after you read them, it's hard to tell exactly what the game wants from you. While night one was more of an issue of Dan being dumb, I couldn't figure out what night two wanted from me. You have to charge this door to move on, but then, you also need to defend yourself from this 4.30 a.m. nightmare. Unfortunately, the door discharges so fast that you end up losing almost all of your charge just when you go over to press one button
wanting to close the curtain. In the end, I just couldn't, which is a shame. Sure, you can make a great case that I suck. I don't think I try to hide that when it comes to that fact. But in this game, it just felt like it created a barrier of entry. If there were a bit more opportunity to see how things work, I would feel like I would have enjoyed this more. In the end though, night two would be my end. You may now comment about how terrible I am and I don't care. I mean, my shattered ego does, but do what you gotta do. I'll just cry in a corner tonight. Next up is a remake of a game I was originally going to cover all the way back when I did the first episode of the series, Return to Freddy's. I decided ultimately to cut it because, well, turned out everyone generally disliked the original game. Now fast forward a few years and a few mental breakdowns later, and an unofficial reboot has dropped, reworking the original into a solid game. Return to Freddy's takes place after the events of FNAF 1 and by proxy FNAF 2, where Fazbear Entertainment reopens the pizzeria for revival. And shocker, they need a security guard. It's you. Put this on. Get in the chair. Look at this iPad. Don't die. Return to Freddy's is what happens when you take FNAF 1 and 2, put them into a mixing bowl, then throw a jackhammer into it. The defenses consist of both the right door, a mask, and the flashlight to mix in basically every mechanic from the previous games. So while Chica is stopped by the door, Bonnie is defended with the mask and Foxy the flashlight. But the originals aren't your only foes. You'll also need to stop the puppet and the second most disturbing balloon boy I ever seen. You still haunt my dreams with all sorts of confusing thoughts, you terrifying, beautiful chin. There's not really much more to say about this. It plays very similar to both games simultaneously, and the reboot does a great job of making it playable. I guess. I barely played the original, but I think that's fine. Let's keep the remaster train going with Five Nights at Creepers Remastered. At this rate, the FNAF community has remastered more games in the same time Square Enix remastered Final Fantasy VII. Oh, but it's so good. Tifa, you are my everything. You do know you married me, right? Like I don't see you drooling over Alucard. He's so broody. Okay, fine. But at least I'm not having to play FNAF fan games. I know. Five Nights at Creepers is just a fun experience. It definitely wasn't the most difficult game in the bunch, but it is a fantastically balanced game. Just as the name implies, you have to fight against the forces of Minecraft. The Skelly Bros function as Bonnie and Chica, Creeper is your Freddy, and the zombie is like Foxy if he was a, a zombie. But like a classic zombie, not a super fast left for dead zombie. Y you get the point. Defending against the mobs requires you to stay in the cameras most of the time, only really popping out to stop the zombie or creeper. It has a nice build up in difficulty as each animatronic is introduced slowly. There's only one small issue and that is the main room cam. There aren't many cameras in this, which I personally won't complain about. However, the main camera where active mobs go before attacking you doesn't work properly. If more than one mob is in that camera, only the most recent mob will be visible. It's not game breaking at all, but it does add another unnecessary level of difficulty you have to deal with. Creepers also has story mini games between each night showing how we got to us being attacked by mobs. It's a similar story to FNAF, but it's a nice spin instead of just being FNAF Minecraft, end of story. It's a fun game for fans of both franchises, so if you need more Minecraft in your FNAF, here's a healthy serving. When we streamed the games on Twitch, I had the pleasure of having two of the devs of two different games jump in. The first one was Jeb Yoshi, who brings us Five Nights at Yoshi's. I freaking love Five Nights at Yoshi's. It's this episode's goof game that ended up being just a great game, game. It's a long title and it cost a fortune to write it on this trophy. I mean, that's a lie. This is just a PNG. Five Nights at Yoshi's is a major rework of FNAF 1, but with Yoshi's. <laughs> FNAF just has so much personality. While other games have animatronics that would be described as the one that goes left, the Yoshis each have a distinct personality. Of course, my favorite is the neurotic Daniel, because that's just me as a Yoshi, both in name and attitude. I mean, look how mad he looks when he can't win. This Yoshi embodies everything that is my saltiness. When it comes to defending yourself, each Yoshi has a unique ability to throw you off. Daniel needs to be scared away first before you can close the door. Onion has a decoy that can trick you into wasting power. And Yoshi is terrifying and he could attack you from both sides during his aggressive phase. That being said, again, we have a game that has a bad case of the reads. Each knight has a chunk of text to teach you about each Yoshi. 
though it's a bit more forgivable because the game is definitely a bit more forgiving. Though, if there is one particular flaw about this game, it's that the nights are long. I'm not sure if it's a one-to-one -one emulating of FNAF 1, but it definitely felt like things drag out a bit longer than they should. Though it does seem that night one is the only night where it is felt the most. Once the Yoshis become active, it definitely feels quicker. Despite the small flaws, this is a must play. It's a fun game with tons of personality and terrifying Yoshis I better not find in my closet. Oh no. What? Ah, never mind. He's cute. You can stay. And we keep going. My god, we're only halfway through. I hope you guys are enjoying this super episode. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever the YouTube wants. Next is a game that dropped right when I finished piecing together FNAF Fan Games 4, Tyken Sons. The first game in this series that features the characters from Scott's mediocre piece, Chipper and Sons. Tyken Sons takes place after Chipper and Sons as we play as Tyke's son, Mike. As the next generation of the Beaver family, Mike begins his legacy in the family business. Tyken Sons is basically a combination of Chipper and Sons and FNAF. The day parts play like chippers, and the night parts play like FNAF. I think we should start with the day parts because I have more to say because they're a freaking grind. I think I spent most of the game during the day parts going around collecting woods and coins just to hopefully get what I needed. Granted, I play most of this on version 1.0 when it was released. Version 1.1 definitely helps make the grind easier to handle, though it doesn't change the fact that you should be prepared to do some grinding. However, the day really shines with the story. While it is very tongue-in-cheek a lot of the time, like how your own dad tries to pin a crime on you at one point, so father of the year award there. Beyond that though, there's a fairly dark story going on here. I don't want to get too deep in it for spoiler reasons, but there's a lot of themes of paying for sins of our past. This manifests into gameplay during the night sections. While you'll be spending the day building robots and other requests, at night you'll be defending yourself from your creations. The FNAF style comes in each night where you'll be needing to use your flashlight and curtains to defend yourself from your robotic helpers. I personally like the night sections best in the game. The atmosphere takes a sharp turn to creepy as you go from bright and colorful to dark and eerie. Defending isn't too difficult in the early nights as it is fairly easy to get around to close curtains and strobe light one of the crab people, crab people. You'll occasionally need to run up to your room to grab batteries for your flashlight, which is where the challenge comes in. You'll need to balance your time and battery power to defend yourself properly. This game definitely took the most time out of all the games because of the grinding, but if you enjoy building simulators and FNAF style gameplay, this is your game. As I mentioned earlier, we had two developers stop by the recording stream. The second was the director of our next game, Animators Hell. A UCN type game featuring animatronics styled after FNAF animators here on YouTube. That sentence was a mouthful. FNAF animation is a big part of the FNAF YouTube community, and one that I admittedly haven't really dived too much into, but have an enormous amount of respect for. Source Filmmaker is complicated as heck. When it comes to the game, it's a UCN clone, so I of course have my usual complaints. Lots of reading before you can even play the game. Fortunately, this is only a demo. There's still time. You guys can break the wheel. Break it! So setting aside that critique, I gotta say this is easily one of the most polished games in the bunch. Just everything here is eye candy and it makes me happy until jump scares where I cry under my desk. When it comes to the gameplay, while it is overwhelming, it's actually a great deal easier to handle than you think. Each animatronic has a distinct and quickly learned mechanic. Whether it be closing vents with audio cues or slapping away some spiders, it's all fairly easy to grasp individually. So of course the first thing I did was turn everyone on, panicked, and died in about 6 seconds. My UCN ritual. But going chunk by chunk, you can learn how each animatronic functions so you can be ready to take them all on. Though it should be noted that each animatronic has a unique difficulty level. While you can't do a 50-20 mode, it does create a more balanced experience without triggering heart attacks every minute. Now this is only a demo so far, and from what I have seen, it's safe to say the full version of this game is going to be one of the best UCN fan games out there. 
So count on us covering the full game in FNAF Fan Games 8. How are we still doing this freaking show? Please just stop making these games. I need to step away from an inevitable existential crisis and relieve some stress. So let's flip the script here and be the one doing the chasing. Afton's Revenge is our next game and it's definitely a stress reliever. You play a spring trap as you scavenge for an axe and take out those pesky roaming animatronics. Except for Golden Freddy. Golden Freddy don't give a crap and he'll come running right at you. This game is a nice change of pace, but you can definitely tell this is still a demo. You'll only have until 6am to take out Freddy and friends, and you'll be spending most of the time hunting for the freaking axe. And no, you can't just memorize where it is because the axe placement is completely random each time. Fortunately, you can run for a bit. The stamina bar depletes rather quickly. I don't think this is necessarily bad though. It's just going to be a key to balancing this game in the future as it gets closer to release. Now I should point out it's only a demo, so while I bring up a lot of critiques here, it is a fun time if you need the stress relief. There's a lot of great ideas already in the works that will address a lot of my critiques, including an upgrading system. Guys, I'm just a sucker for upgrading and maxing out stats. I like numbers. I'm one failed career away from being your terrible math teacher. Let's jump into another game that flips who you control, FNAF Simulator. A ton of you guys said I would really enjoy this, and you weren't wrong. FNAF Simulator is just a damn delight. Building off of Bonnie Simulator and Chica Simulator, you get the chance to play as everyone across the franchise. Well, most of the animatronics. While some are still in development, it does seem that's where the game plan is for the game. Unlike Chica and Bonnie Sim before, FNAF Sim is a FPS. You'll be actually controlling your animatronic through the map rather than just clicking through the cameras to move. It's a nice touch and man is it insanely polished. Each move and look around feels just like an animatronic. When you move your head and stop, you have that animatronic bounce. You know, the the the, the bouncing movement. Just, just look at the freaking video. I can't describe it. It, it. It's the animatronic bounce. The, the head bobs, like, like you know, and Past Dan was really tired when he wrote this. Each animatronic has a special ability that helps you in your quest of putting a human body into a fluffy bear Iron Maiden. Some help drain the power, while others help create openings to help you sneak into the office easier. It's not an incredibly difficult game, but it's an insanely fun game to play. I say it's not hard right now, but I was only able to unlock a few characters before I had to stop. More importantly, all I could think about was how great this game would be as a multiplayer game. And wouldn't you know it, the creator did just that with Five Nights Together. Before you could join any game, you first need to complete a tutorial. I guess it's important to understand how they work before playing, so let's start it in- Oh! Oh, oh good. It's a those nights at Rachel's 2 situation. Well, I guess then no five nights together then. Well, before I go to the doctors to get my ears checked because they're bleeding profusely, I think it's worth mentioning that this idea is too freaking good to not actually become a game. FNAF does open itself into creating an asymmetric multiplayer mode similar to Dead by Daylight or Doom Eternal Battle Mode. One security guard versus a full team of animatronics that's gold. Someone make a good version of that and let's freaking stream it. Our final game of the video is The Freddy Files, and man, did I totally underestimate this game. You play as a security guard who is hinted as being THE security guard during Afton's child existence removals. On one fateful night, the entrance to the pizzeria is mysteriously locked. Now it's up to you to start to put the pieces of the previous events together to solve what happened all those years ago. Oh, and finish your shift. The game is broken up into two parts, 8-bit exploring segments where you unravel the mysteries of the past and the standard Five Nights gameplay we're used to see. The exploring segments are great, if a bit too long. Besides the first night where I spent 10 minutes looking for these freaking sticks, I swear, I looked everywhere, and then I just passed it, they just finally showed up. Haunted sticks! Haunted sticks, I tell ya! The exploring segments are probably some of the best I've played in this style. They're not just platforming or mazes or whatever Scott decides feeds the lore machine best. They actually have more stakes and in-depth mechanics. Plus, there's even a bullet hell boss. Finally putting my Binding of Isaac skills to work in these videos. But like I said, they're a bit long. If you fail when you're almost finished, you're going to spend quite a bit longer in this segment. Fortunately, the exploring segments are easy to pick up. The highlight for me, though, was the typical Five Nights sections. 
Again, defenses are easy to pick up, which I appreciate. You'll be using a set of alarms to send animatronics back to the stage. While it initially seems really easy, it all comes down to making sure that you keep the RAM for your alarms down. Why a ringing bell would fill up your computer's RAM is a little beyond me, but I'll go with it. Overall, the game is just a great experience through and through. You have a great balance of gameplay types that keep the game fun to play all the way through. It definitely feels like a full FNAF experience. And with that, another batch of FNAF fan games is complete. It always seems when I return to these games, they continue to become more and more well polished. But you don't really care about that, do you? You're wondering what I'm going to be sweating to next. Huh. That didn't really do it for me. It's about helping oh, Get out of here! Hey, you made it this far, so help me out by dropping a subscribe and ring the bell. Remember, if we reach 100,000 subscribers, we'll be doing twice the fan games come October. A special thanks to producer Evan, Alyssa B. Crazy, Elizabeth Mello, and all my Patreon patrons. Next video will be a little different, so make sure you ring that bell to know when it comes out. And until then, Cybered out.